Hello, be Wall Star interview, man. I'm here with Fresh as promoter, blogger, businessman, creator, mm. artist. The artist. Yeah, <laughs> boy, right? If we say JBS, we know JBS to be a lot of different things, man. For but for you, JBS, who is JBS, man? Basically, uh, JBS is like an individual who don't have no limit. Skies is his limit, basically. Yeah. You push, you push the culture. You keep going, you don't stop, keep mm -hmm. pushing, basically. You've been, you been in the music scene, right? For a very long time, mm -hmm. right? Just been getting the business yet. You've been in a lot of different areas for a very, 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 very long time. How long you been doing these things? Like when you read, if you can estimate, if you can be, you can be exact, how long mm -hmm. you been doing these things? I probably say like 10 years. So like a decade now? Yeah, 10 years. You know what, I'm gonna say shout out to you, man. Shout out to you mm -hmm. for doing that, cause, uh, I'm still I'm still new to this right here. All this right here is all new right now. And you been here for ten years. I think we should give you prop mm -hmm. for most of the things that you do for the, for the culture and things like that. You bring in artists from Liberia. You bring in artists from Ghana. You bring in artists from Nigeria. Every part of the world. I just want to tell you we appreciate what you're doing, what you got going on, everything. Before we get into in the interview. Definitely love. So, it. like uh. When you first, uh, when you first uh, get into the music business, right? How old were you when you first got into the music business? So when I first started doing this, I was about like twenty three, right? Mm. Yeah, you know, I first started like tapping into like yeah. the whole promotion, the music, and that whole entertainment side. Yeah, yeah, I was like twenty three when I started doing it. That's what's up, man. See, I was it's crazy. I was like uh, two years younger than you when I started doing mine. So, but we ain't gonna tell people how old I am, but hey, we're just gonna leave it like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm old, I'm gonna just keep it like that. I'm old. Yeah. But uh, we started doing this since a minute now. We still pushing this thing out here, but I have noticed like you've been spending a lot of time with Liberian like, artists, Young Moose. Mm -hmm. I just wanna know uh, what's your relationship with Young Moose? So, Moose basically was the artist that kind of introduced me to like the managing South music. So, I kind of mm -hmm. met Moose back in the day. We was having this event, and Moose wanted to perform there. So, Moose. Yeah decided to like kind of like kind of rap to show yeah. me that he has something so once moose did that we started going to different studios mm. then that's when i started like to tap into like the, yeah. the music side like the uh, entertainment yeah. situation here well moose did want to influence to make a make your first song because i heard yeah. i heard the record i heard the record i heard you rapping on the record with yeah. moose I think that's the only record I found of you, and that's what was, that was the record with moose yeah definitely definitely moose, moose always tried to get me to do music <laughs> yeah it's like Cause like one of my role models in the entertainment industry is Diddy. Yeah. So Shout Diddy, out to Diddy man. yeah, definitely. Diddy is one of the people I really look up to. Like his story, like how he 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 was able to push the hip hop culture. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do with the, this whole Liberian mm -hmm. uh, trap code, Afro beat culture. I'm trying to figure yeah. out how to like break, kick down doors, and like uh, make this shit look beautiful, so yeah. other people can tap into it. How they did hip hop back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, speaking of Diddy, right? I know you probably met Diddy before. I've right? been, yeah, I've been around Diddy a couple of times. Cause I see you with, I see you with songs and things like that. Yeah, I've been around but uh, when you met Diddy, well, when you met Diddy, uh, have you ever had a conversation with him? Yeah. Yet? Nah, I never had an opportunity to have a conversation with Diddy, but Diddy been around, been to like a couple of events. Yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago, they had a Super Bowl in Atlanta. Yeah. Diddy was Diddy was in the same section with Diddy because I'm really good friends with uh, one of Diddy's sons, like mm -hmm. best friends. So. Yeah. We all like move around together some time when I go out of town to like Miami, mm -hmm. different places I kind of meet with them. And then I had a birthday party in Philly yeah. a couple of years ago. I brought uh, Justin Coons, he, he yeah, hosted Justin. the party. Yeah, so Justin's wild, man. Yeah, so once they came, <laughs> we all just kind of mm -hmm. connected. And one thing I really like rock with them because he like really raised his kids. Like, yeah. they don't load down on people, like, they, they, they treat everybody yeah. with respect. You feel me? So that's one thing about them. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Yeah man, uh, we we did some we did some we did some backup work on you. Mm -hmm. Where when you first started, right? You had a group called Swagger Boss, right? Definitely, definitely. So I just want to know for those who for for some of old who don't really know what Swagger Boss really was or what really is, why the Swagger Boss and uh, do you guys still have ties like like before? Yeah, so so basically, this is how all this started. So we, me and a few of my friends, wanted to have a birthday party because. We was born like we cancers. We was born in July, yeah. so we three of us came together wanting to do the party, 
and this guy called Africano back in the day was kind of like he was in the community like he did like videos and press stuff like he was like he was older than us so yeah. he did our photo shoot for our flyer mm. so he was like yo y'all got swag you call yourself swagger boy yeah so we kind of uh we kind of just ran with that and then we started like doing like other parties and stuff like that but you know how it is man yeah. with entertainment people kind of outgrow one another everybody if you doing this i'm doing this like because i was doing i was heavy with the music side while i was also mm. doing the promotion side so but my guys, they was doing just the promotion side. Mm. So sometimes I gotta travel, I gotta go out of town, and they. So we kind of grew apart, but they still, they still my people. Uh, yeah, so still, is that, yeah, still. You guys still in touch? Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, we still in touch. Okay, so uh, back in twenty fourteen, matter of fact, back in twenty fourteen, right? You would know as one of the best promoters from Bristol, PA, mm -hmm. right? DJ Bossman know as one of the best promoters from Southwest Philly, right? I just want to know, like, uh, cause when we talk Liberians, we really don't work together, get money together. Mm -hmm. But how was you guys able to pull your pride aside to go to, you know what, like create something different to go, not just catch the bag, but also put our artists out there. How was you guys able to pull your pride aside to work together as a team? Definitely, that yo, that that team was, boy, we was we was running Philly. Hell we yeah, ran man. Philly for a while. We ran Philly. It was like we just. Like, it was kind of, like, out of love. We just really, like, just mm -hmm. decided to, to work together. We started working mm -hmm. together. And, mm -hmm. like, it was it was a crazy combination because he was a DJ. And I'm me. And I do what I do. And he do what he do. It come together. And we mm -hmm. also had another uh, person that was part of us called Versatile. He was a part Shout of that. Versatile, man. Yeah, so he Shout was a part of that. Versatile. So the three of us. Like, we, yeah. we, we really, like, I can't really tell a team in Philly that held it down like us when it came to like the Afro mm -hmm. African party scene. Like we held it down for a long time. Yeah, man. And we made some good amount of money too. So But I see you buzz down, man. I oh, see oh, you got that's old I money. I see you got the Rolex on. You we got made, we, we you made got, old money. You got you got the diamond flash in the chains with the jibbiz, everything, something like that, man. You know, you know, you know, but, you know light, light, light stuff. We just working my man. We you working. been you been in the industry for over a decade, right? How did you how do you like uh what do you do that really keep your brand relevant within those 10 years and up to now it's still relevant up to this day? So what I've done in the 10 years, I've always been consistent. And one thing I never did, I never put money in front of like my brand. Like mm -hmm. I never chased money. Yeah. It was all about it making sense for my brand. You yeah. feel me? I put myself in places, positions, went places, made investments. And it was all about like, how can I, create something that, that the day I ain't here, a mm -hmm. couple of years from now, people are gonna still talk about it. You feel me? That's crazy. So, so it was never about money. When you start making things about money, you kind of really lose the purpose of what you really trying to get accomplished. You feel me? Mm -hmm. yeah. So when you do your first song, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, see, we gotta talk about that because that all part of the JB is legacy. Right, because if you're leaving that thing behind, everybody's gonna remember you guys a lot of different things. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people, a lot of people get it ready on the graveside. Like you will know as a brother, as a father, as a son. But when we look at JBS, JBS is known way more than that. JBS is known as a producer, as an engineer, as everything, as a businessman, <laughs> as a music, as a blogger, as a as a promoter, as a uh, whole lot of the list go on and on, including model, modeling and things like that. But we see like you try to transfer that into business right now. Mm -hmm. And you got one of the best restaurants in Philly called Fuji's. I had the food, that's why I say it's the best. It's not appreciate because it, of you. Appreciate, appreciate the love. It's not because of you, but I had the food. Then my own in the kitchen, we didn't want to have it. Yeah, the food is really good, yeah. man. I just want to say it. But the name Fuji's, right? Because uh, when I, I'm, I was born in Liberia. I grew up in Liberia. When we had Fuji's, it meant greedy. Mm -hmm. But when I came to America, that's a different meaning of Fuji's. But it's spelled different, but it's still the same. It's still sound the same. Because I, when you get Fuji's, you think about uh, Lauren Hill, you think about uh, Wyclef, and these other artists from that just blend up to just make a Caribbean label, right? But when you say Fuji's, why do Fuji's wear the mix to you, and why is Fuji's? So definitely when, when when I was thinking about coming up with the name for the restaurant, you know in Liberia, Fuji's mean you greedy? Yeah. Or Fuji mean you greedy, so I said, okay, Fuji's, it's, it's, it's kind of like a commercial name. Mm -hmm. You feel me? So down the line, we can be able to sell stuff in like the supermarkets, Fuji's, where it be 
African food package in a way which you can go, all the kids in college can go there, they can go buy it, they can put it in the microwave. So yeah. this this really is a brand that we are building, you feel me? Mm -hmm. It's bigger than these, these four walls that you're in right now. Yeah, man. Yeah, but, so it's just starting here, but it's going to be bigger than this. But I just want to say a uh, shout out to you first for letting me on shoot us Fuji's. Mm -hmm. And every interview we just did, we just did five interviews in Fuji's right now. And uh, I want to give you more respect because you're one of the people that like, uh, I'm going to tell you this, but I look up to you in the entertainment side. Right? I look up to you to be one of the niggas that I give respect to because you've been doing this since way before me or way before some of us that's just coming up because uh, you cannot... You cannot disrespect the origin of it. Mm -hmm. And you one of the niggas that really like started this shit from scratch and ground roots. But what advice would you give to an artist, right? I mean to a promoter, to an artist, to a blogger, to a model, to a music uh let's just say a music expert that's just trying to come in this field right now. What advice will you give them if they're trying to go in your if they're trying to follow your footsteps? Definitely for me I'd tell you to be consistent. Consistency is the key. Yeah. You gotta make a lot of sacrifices and you gotta understand too, like when it comes with sacrifices, they ain't talking about you gotta go kill somebody. Mm -hmm. That means you gotta take away stuff you love to do. Mm -hmm. Like you gotta take away time from people that you love being around. Yeah. You gonna have a lot of problems in your relationships. You gotta date people that understand what you're trying to get yourself into because this in industry and this game has rules and regulations, you feel me? Yeah. And no matter who you are, you gotta follow those rules and regulations. Just like when you have a regular job, your job got rules and regulations. Yeah. Same thing as an industry. So if you dating somebody, they got to understand, like, you going to be out 3 or 4 in the morning. Now we're doing this interview. It's like 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. If you got a girlfriend who don't understand that, she's going to be blowing up your phone, mm -hmm. and you're going to start fighting. And and basically, too, as a as a creator, entertainer, mm -hmm. you got you need peace. Yeah. So you Because you, you're a creator. You're creating shit. So your mind always needs to be free. Yeah. You don't need no unnecessary stress. So you got to... Your partner that you're dating is... They play a major role in this... Whatever you're trying to create. Okay. As an artist, as a blogger, as an a entrepreneur. Yeah. That's definitely very important. Yeah. Another thing too, right? Uh, I want to touch in with the situation back in 2016. Right? So, back in 2016... Uh, I really don't want to say the artist name, but if you're trying, if you're trying to test on that topic, you gotta to say the artist name, right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Back in 2016, when Bucky Rowe first started the Trapco movement, right? You was one of the well-known producer, I mean, well-known promoter out there, mm -hmm. right? And you was the you was the one that was open enough to speak about Trapco movement. And you said you said you said that uh, Trapco wasn't really gonna go nowhere according to according to what we already saw on the media. Mm -hmm. But I just want to know not right now, but at that time, at that present time back in 2016 when you first heard Trapco, right? Why were you thinking of making make the statement back in 2016? So I'm not talking right now, though. I'm talking yeah, back yeah, in 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, yeah, 2016. The reason why I made that statement about Trapco in 2016, because the thing about like like it just the way they was pushing it out there for me. Mm -hmm. You feel me? It wasn't really. It wasn't really making sense to me when it comes to the business side. Uh, the business, business side. side. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. It wasn't really making sense. And now, if you really take a look at Trap Code, it's really saturated. Yeah. Everybody's doing it now. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So, I think that they really took time to really, like, make it, like, more, like, beautiful so other people can want to tap into it. You feel mm -hmm. me? Because that's what's going on with Afrobeat right now. These other nationalities, <clears throat> like they are making this shit look pretty. Like if you see an artist drop a song, like a like a Nigerian or a Ghanaian drop records, you see people doing TikTok videos. You will see TikTok influencers. You will see big big uh, celebrities like mm -hmm. uh, movie actors and stuff. Mm -hmm. They do those different things, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that dance, you gotta listen to that song. Yeah. If you, because the new world we're living in, people follow one another. Okay, everybody follows. You feel me? Follow. So it don't matter. It don't matter what somebody's doing. Somebody, if somebody out there in the snow running around butt naked, mm. if, if they see a bunch of famous people doing it, they're gonna start doing it too. That's okay. So that's one thing about the trap code movement. Movement for me, and one thing that 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 bothered me about that was that. Uh, you have artists that do R&B music. You have artists that do hip-hop music. Mm -hmm. You have artists that do different genre of music. They're forgetting about that genre of music. Yeah. And they're doing trap core. And the shit not sounding right because 
that's not what they're supposed to be doing. So niggas wasn't even ready to get an original song. Niggas was niggas was niggas certain niggas built their fan base right mm -hmm. off of R and B music. Yeah. They left that because they felt like they wasn't trap code was the wave. They yeah yeah they felt like they wasn't going nowhere at that moment because yeah. trap code was was the wave at that moment. You yeah. feel me? But so, isn't that isn't that what really happened in the industry? Like you look at like uh, they should say uh, right now they should say we look at uh, so look at the Philly style right? Mm -hmm. Like you listen to Meek Mill. You listen to the dead kids, you listen to like Gilly, you listen to all these people, right? And you've been around all these people I'm naming right now. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because I set the time, right? Everybody in Philly wanted to rap like me, because that was the meat wave, mm -hmm. right? Everybody wanted to hold up with a mini record. So if an R and B artist changed into that, and uh, and a foreign and a different artist trying to change to that way, or somebody trying to still original like that, you 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 as an entertainer, right? Mm -hmm. You're not just an entertainer. You were entertainer and you were way bigger than an entertainer because you you know how to go about your business. You a businessman and an entertainer at the same time, right? So uh, you talk about the chakra movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's decent. That's nice. I understand your point because if I was to ask you today, right? About that question. About that. If I was to ask you that question today about how you feel right now. It's a whole different ball game because it's a whole different thing. This chakra is already somewhere right now that we can say it's it's among one of the hip code trap code. You gotta put this in the, in the category. Yeah, but, one, but, one, but, one, but one thing I'm gonna tell you about trap code, right? Mm -hmm. That we gotta pay attention to music in general, right? Yeah. Anything in life, it takes a lot of time to it for it to get it to do. where you go. That's so a, a lot of artists that started the trap code mo movement, mm -hmm. doing the trap code movement. They might never benefit from the trap code shit. It might be the people that's gonna come after them. So you were talking so, about copyright then? No, I'm not talking about copyright. I mean like, mm -hmm. cause you know, you know hip hop back in the day, right? Mm -hmm. People that did hip hop way back in the day, they mm -hmm. didn't benefit from hip hop. Fast. It's a new age hip hop. People that do hip hop now is benefiting from hip hop. Yep, but them guys were ones that made it sacrifice. So yeah. for me, I ask questions. Are you willing to, to be the one that's gonna make that sacrifice to create a whole brand new genre of music Mm -hmm. To push out to the world, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's gonna cost you a lot of money because you, you, it's just like it's just like you trying to make uh, American people taste African food. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. It takes a lot. Like you gotta really like try to talk them into doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a lot of work, and, and a lot of people that's doing trap core on a high level, they might they might not get the, to benefit like how the people that's gonna come after them. So definitely trap core have like. It, it, it's doing what it's doing, yeah. but it's, for me, it's all about it's business. You yeah. feel me? Yeah. It's all about making sense at this moment for me. But yeah, yeah. big up to everybody that's doing charcoal. And my advice to all the artists out there, yo, if you are an R and B artist and you are a rapper, like just stick to what you're doing. Yeah. Let the people who do that trap do that trap Everybody got it. That's one thing about our industry. People don't like to stay in their lane. That's true. You feel me? That's why. I, that's why I, I'm gonna jump into that too. Mm -hmm. Not to cut you up. Speaking of jumping in lane, like yeah. you say, uh, we talk off camera. We talk. We talk. Uh, we talk on the phone. We talk backstage. We talk. We've been a couple of places that we talk. That we had. It may. It may not even be like an hour conversation, like a five minute conversation. What you think about? What you think about bloggers that are trying to turn to an artist? Because when we notice it, we see the blogger that's trying to be an artist. We see a blogger that's trying to be a promoter. We see a blogger that's trying to be a model. We see a blood that's trying to be an artifice that turns like that, trying to go in a different, different route. Why so do you it's, it's, that? You so it's, it's, not just blog, it's not just bloggers, right? It's DJs. DJs want to be promoters. Mm -hmm. So if everybody leave that workspace, right? Mm -hmm. Like you you doing this blogging stuff, you got your platform, you building it, you doing interviews. Mm -hmm. If you step away from that part in the, in the industry, who's mm -hmm. going to be doing that part? Because you know, <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, an industry, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's different, different things that come together yeah. that create an industry. It's not just the artists. The yeah. artists need this platform for interviews. Yeah. Like that's one thing. That's one problem we're having. So if all the bloggers step away from their job and start doing parties, because whatever you do, you gotta you gotta put time on it. Yeah. So now you find yourself as a blogger, you just posting flyers on your shit. Yeah. You promoting parties now. You're not even promoting <laughs> yeah. people content that they're sending you. You're not yeah. worried about artists. You just worry about making money. So. Yeah. People, especially DJs too. A lot of DJs uh, start being promoters. Now you're a promoter. You're posting flyers. You're not. You're not. You're not taking time to go research new songs. You're not taking time to perfect your craft. You're not taking time to, to really say, okay, I'm gonna do a record with this artist. And you're not doing none of that because yeah. you want to come get the promoter's money. Yeah. 
Mm. So, okay, say so promoters go start being DJ and start getting all you guys wedding gigs, mm -hmm. all you guys baby shower gigs. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the end of the day, like, we, everybody got to stay in that lane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I always did for myself. Mm. I always stay in my lane, stay true to what I was doing. Man. And I know over the time, over the year, my consistency is going to get me to where I got to go. That's a fact. You feel me? That's a fact. Yeah, so people got to stay in their lane, basically. Let's talk, let's talk S&G, right? Mm -hmm. It's S&G back in 2018, 2019, 20. It's a feature in 2018, 2017, and 2020, right? Mm-hmm. S&G, one of the biggest, one of the biggest label. And then, like, Brandon Tim inside. Definitely. You got artists like Kizzy W. You got artists like Young Moose, right? Mm-hmm. SMG was going well, going very great. When you started SMG, you had, you even, y'all even went on the tour with one of your biggest artists at that time, Kiss Debbie. And Moose 2 was there too. You all probably went on tour with Moose too. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. And, uh, we did tour with Moose. And SMG and Moose, it's like, let's just say Moose, not, Moose is now sound like Sh the Shane Kingston. Shane, yeah. Yeah, sure. right? So, and then you got, you got, you got Kiss Debbie. Is he still SMG or he's not SMG no more? KCW is still on the SMG contract. Okay. But you know how you know how it is, bro. Yeah. People artists gonna do what they wanna do. Yeah. And certain labels not gonna make move. It it, 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 it don't make no sense right now to go. Yeah. There's nothing really happening for a, a label to want to pay a lawyer to go start taking music down and stuff. No, so yeah, yeah so you so, just yeah. so is there, is there like a like a conflict between y'all or is it like it is. is it just like uh. What's the relationship like with KCW right now? I'm gonna just ask so, the question. So, now. so for me, like I don't, me, me and KCW was never, we never was able to click mm. relationship wise because we wasn't able to get on the same page mentally. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Because, but he, KCW is a dope artist. He is, man. But he once is. it just, you know, like I said, man, everybody just gotta understand like what you are signing up for. You have to kind of just. Put your pride aside some time. You just gotta just understand the process. You mm -hmm. feel me? You gotta just play your part. Mm -hmm. Like I said, every artist play your part. Mm -hmm. Artists don't ask for management and then you want to manage the manager. <laughs> you know a lot of artists want management, but they don't understand what a manage management is. Mm -hmm. A management, a manager tell you what what to do. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? You create the music, and they tell you they point you, they put you in positions. And they show you directions and they tell you how to go about it. But yeah. a lot of artists want to manage a manager, so but okay, man. yeah. One more thing about business, right? We want to tap back into business. What is it like being a business? Uh, what 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 are the responsibilities of a business owner, especially in the Philadelphia area? What's what's the responsibility mm -hmm. like? Cause you know Philadelphia got high crime rate. You got a whole lot of different things going on. You got you got you got to deal with gun violence. You got to deal with police brutality and all the things like that. You got to deal with just crazy people around just trying to just destroy things. What is it like being a business owner in this kind of environment that it's still it's still shine lights on different things? But from your point of view, you've been uh, you been because we're seeing riot in Philly over the past three to four years, a bunch of different riots. What is it like being a business owner in this environment? So ba so basically for me everything in life is a that I, is a risk. Mm -hmm. You stepping outside, walking outside, you can get, you can get hit by a car, you can get shot, whatever is a risk. So mm -hmm. for me, like if I, when I when I vision things, things come to my brain to do, I just do it. Mm -hmm. I don't really be thinking about everything that come around there or what could happen. Because if you ever start thinking like that, you can, you would never get nothing done. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we just get everything to God, man. I'm a strong believer in God. Yeah. And this business right here started in Philly, but mm -hmm. this business is going to, it's a franchise. Yeah. You understand? Right now we're working on the next location, probably Atlanta, mm -hmm. trying to tap into that market. So yeah, definitely. So when we get when we get in our location in Liberia, because uh, we know we know the sea was in yeah. Liberia like uh, for a couple months, like the December break. And uh, you're back there for the LEA, and you're back there for LMA too. And mm -hmm. You're back there uh, with your with your artists. Yeah, Tama Ali, D12. Was there, yeah. And uh, what was it like? What was it like going back home for you? So since I've been in America, my first time going back home. So when I came here, I was kind of young, so I had no idea what was really yeah. was going on back there. So mm -hmm. when I got there, man, it's, it woke me up. Yeah. It woke me up, and it also made me grateful. Having an opportunity to be here, 
Yeah. A lot of people that hate don't understand how, like, this place you at right now, mm -hmm. if you was over there, you won't have a lot of things that you got here right now. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason why you're here. So we all need to tap in and see why we're here. And we need to try to go figure out stuff to help the people back there. So maybe that's the reason why God was able to send some of us here. Mm -hmm. So we can be able to figure out something to help our people back there. Because they don't really have no hope. That's true. Like, I know you probably was there when you was a little older. So yeah, you kind of... I, I came when I was like 16, 17. Yeah, you kind of get what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah, man. Struggle in Liberia is hard. I ain't gonna lie about that. Even though I was a kid at the time. But still, when you start turning 14, 15... Mm -hmm. You gotta know how to get money. So, well, you know, my boy, fourteen, so then I got no kid. That's why. That's why it is like <coughs> in Liberia, the biggest thing in Liberia, right? If you a man in Liberia, you don't know how to pull talk, right? I'm gonna say this to you, man to man, right? If you don't know how to pull talk, pull talk is it's like you being able to talk to somebody talk in the sense that something. you ain't being disrespectful, but you being you being disrespectful at the same time. It don't make sense, but it makes sense. Mm. So it's like you saying shit to me. I'm gonna give you all the praises you want. So I can be able to gain shit from you. Yeah, what you gonna do? You gonna, 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 gonna basically finesse the person. Yeah, so we call it exactly. like, finessing. So yeah, man, your visit to Liberia. Mm -hmm. Let's talk Miami. So uh, when I say Miami right now, what's coming to your head? Movie. A Liberian, a Liberian movie starring a lot of dope Liberian people mm -hmm. that's gonna come out to push our culture. Okay. With style, like I said, in order for people to tap into. The librarian music, the movies, the industry, people gotta like what they are doing. They gotta be, they gotta, like, you, you gotta make it look beautiful. Yeah. For them to be like, yo, what's going on? Like, you know, like now when you see a, a pretty girl, yeah. you wanna go see what's up with her? That's what I'm talking about. Look at the guy here. <laughs> no, but me, right now, right? I'm a very. I'm a very <laughs> He's a I'm, politician, I'm a, I'm, a I'm a laid back person, right? You're a politician. I'm listening to him. I'm a laid back person, right? Uh -huh. I got one female I talk to, and that's one female on it. That's what's up. So, my people that are watching this interview, right? When you guys see a beautiful, a lot of men, you see a beautiful yeah. lady. You don't want, you don't want, you don't want to make her your woman. You just want to just, just have a conversation. Appreciate how she looks. Appreciate her beauty. Yeah. So, in all the people to tap into this culture, this librarian stuff, we selling to them. We gotta figure out how to make it look pretty. Mm -hmm. They're gonna be like, what's going on over there? Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? So let's talk more of the Express. So Mo more Express was a, was a was a dope idea that we started last year. Mm -hmm. And the idea by Moro Express that every year we're gonna go to a new a different city, a popular city. We city this year. This year Miami. Last year we did Atlanta. We 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 mm -hmm. burned Atlanta down. Okay. Yeah, we yeah, I heard I heard I heard all this was pulling up in the foreign cars. A whole lot of, a whole lot of shit was going on in Miami. I mean in, people in, uh, people couldn't even get inside. God, in Atlanta, man. so Miami is gonna be bigger and crazier. So yeah. I'm excited about it, man. What you doing? Like a book or what? We doing pool parties. We doing yacht parties. Yeah. We doing club parties. We doing brunches. We we doing soccer time. We doing basketball time. We doing it's just it's just a dope weekend we putting together, and we we're also doing a uh, Liberian Music Fest too. Yeah, showcase a, a lot of Liberian talents, rappers, Afrobeat artists, singers like. This is the only event in like in a librarian event in America that showcases people that do other other kind of. It's not just all about African music. You okay. feel me? We showcasing because I figure out if you're a librarian, right? You deserve the same respect a librarian that do African music gets. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even no matter no matter what kind of music you do, mm -hmm. you deserve that same kind of love, support, and respect. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're changing the whole narrative of. Yeah. <clears throat> of support when it comes to the librarian music industry. Hey yeah, man, uh, so uh, we're gonna go back where right? so uh, your time being in Liberia as a kid. You leaving Liberia, coming to America, being a kid that uh, don't know the culture, don't know how everything's around you, moving things like that. You've been you've been an adult right now, hanging with all your favorite celebrities that you're hang with, right? When you was building these things, right? What was going through your head? Did you expect yourself to be like a like a, like a guy out there? Like, oh, you know what? I'm gonna be somebody one day. Did you ever did you ever had that talk? Nah, me 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 coming here as a kid, I never imagined like me being what I'm where I'm going from. I never yeah. imagined that. But just one thing about me, like my drive, you feel me, and me believing in in God first, yeah, and believing in myself second. 
Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? That always put me in position because if you start, you move with God, you understand like anything is possible. Yeah. Yeah, and I also learn from other people. I watch, I watch a lot of people that's in the position I'm trying to go on. Like I said, yeah. I'm inspired by Diddy, one of one person that really inspired me. Mm-hmm. You feel me? In his whole journey and his like how his story started. How he was a, a intern. Mm-hmm. He was a like he basically like a runner. Yeah. And now look who he is right now. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, it's just black man lives. Yes, yes, powerful. Now mm-hmm. and the thing about his his him being rich, he's rich mentally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like people don't understand this thing called like being rich. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people think being rich is just having so much money. Like yeah. don't people lately right now they got something called culture culture influence, right? Yeah. They don't they don't care about your money. Yep. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Cause they cause they know they can like it's so easy to make money these days. Yeah. So they they they, they it's all about having influence and having like powerful message to, to give out there to the world. So I definitely Definitely, definitely, man. Just keep pushing. That's that's my my key to life. Keep going, cause one day we all gonna we, we all gonna get out of here one day. Yeah, man. So we'll, and we gonna we gonna take that, man. That's gonna be the world at the end of you right there. Keep what you going? going? What you gotta going, lose, man? What you gotta lose? <laughs> lose? lose? Motherfucker, we gonna use what you gonna lose. But I just wanna say, man. Thanks for your time. Thanks for appreciate everything. It. Appreciate, appreciate it, your time. Appreciate your contribution towards the interview session. I tell you, you saw me doing my thing. You try to like volunteer a spot for us to go to. And now we at Fuji's. Thank you so much for letting us come here. Can you let the people know on all digital platforms where can they where, where can they find you at? Definitely, definitely. Find me on Instagram at I N J Biz. On Facebook at J Biz. On all over. Just type in J Biz, man. I'm yeah, thinking about changing you know, my my garment and said to J Biz. You see, that's how Kanye did that. He changed his to just yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking about changing my garment and J Biz. Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. But thanks for everything, man. Thanks for the time again, once again. J Biz, LB Wall Star interview. You already know this shit is rap. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, Fuji in the building. We 